The establishment has long held a deep disdain for white people. Men, those who are straight, and those who promote a traditional way of life. And each of these groups can be seen as overlapping circles. For example, whilst the establishment holds contempt for men, and allows men to be discriminated against, that doesn't mean that women can't be discriminated against. They can, just not on the grounds of being female. You see, women can be discriminated against if they are white, straight or promote traditionalism, and women are discriminated against on those grounds by the establishment. So a straight white male can be discriminated against for all three of those reasons. He is straight, he is white, and he is male. Whereas a straight white female can only be discriminated against because she is straight and white. Because being female means she is protected on the grounds of her gender, but only on the grounds of her gender. That protection doesn't cover her for other issues, such as race. See how it works? This system of discrimination, which the UK government and legal system has actually termed positive action, yes, that is a real term, which I discussed in my video, British Police, White Men Need Not Apply. The link to that video is in the description below. Anyway, this system of discrimination creates something that I have termed the totem pole of oppression. And atop this totem pole sits the disabled black lesbian. And at the bottom of this totem pole stands the straight, white, able-bodied male. But recently, another factor has crept onto this totem pole, and that is religion. And the establishment has a clear standpoint on religion, resulting in some religions being seen as higher up the totem pole, and others being lower down the totem pole. And the lowest religion on the totem pole is, of course, Christianity with Christians being a group that can be and are discriminated against. And recently, the establishment's disdain for Christianity was taken to a new level. Over the Easter weekend, in the aftermath of the horrific attacks aimed at Christians in Sri Lanka, the establishment's disdain for Christianity was evident for all to see. Easter Sunday saw Islamic terrorists target Christians at churches and hotels in Sri Lanka, killing 253 people and wounding over 500 more. These coordinated attacks formed one of the worst and most bloody terrorist atrocities the world has ever seen. And the victims of these atrocities were clearly defined by their religion. They were targeted because of their religion. But neither the mainstream media nor the establishment politicians wanted to acknowledge that. In fact, both the media and the politicians went to great pains to avoid using the word Christian when talking about the victims of these attacks. And one of the most interesting and telling aspects of the statements issued by the media and the politicians on the attacks in Sri Lanka came in the form of a new phrase that was used when covering these horrific events. All of a sudden, the term Easter worshippers began to appear on Twitter and in the media. Now, I've never heard the term Easter worshippers before, because no one used it before, just as no one used the terms Passover worshippers or Ramadan worshippers. It's almost as if the media and the politicians were trying to avoid using the word Christian, or more accurately, they were avoiding describing the victims of these attacks as Christian. And this wasn't just isolated to a few cases. In fact, over 50 leading Democrats in the US sent tweets about these terrorist attacks and all found creative ways of describing the victims without using the word Christian. But let's back up for a second. You see, despite this disdain for Christianity coming to a crescendo in the wake of the terrorist attacks in Sri Lanka, it's actually been building up for a long time. In both the US and the UK, it's been rather trendy to attack and demean Christians for quite a while now, with the media often presenting Christians as the butt of any joke. What's more, it's always been absolutely smiled upon by the media to attack and demean Jesus. And often celebrities and the writers and producers of television shows and films have reveled in producing what could easily be described as blasphemous material that could rightly be regarded as highly offensive by Christians. 
Jewish comedian Sarah Silverman once famously said that, and I quote, I hope the Jews did kill Christ. I'd do it again in a second. End quote. Now, firstly, when I say comedian, I do so in the loosest possible terms, as this woman isn't at all funny. But let's focus on that particularly humorless quote, a quote taken from one of Sarah Silverman's stand-up shows, titled Jesus is Magic. Now, that particular quote is important for two reasons. Firstly, it's important because of its anti-Christian content. And secondly, it's important because the person who said it, Sarah Silverman, is a darling of the Democratic Party in the United States. In fact, she spoke at the 2016 Democratic National Convention. Now let's imagine for a minute that someone had proclaimed that they wanted to kill the Muslim prophet, Muhammad, even if they were joking. Do you think that person would be embraced by the establishment? Or do you think they would be pilloried, deplatformed, and forced to issue a groveling apology? Well, one thing is for sure, they wouldn't be speaking at the Democratic National Convention. And I know some people will say that I'm taking things out of context. And since the Jesus is Magic tour, Sarah Silverman, she may have changed. After all, the Jesus is Magic tour did take place in 2005. But let me read you this tweet that Sarah Silverman sent on Christmas Day 2015. And I quote, Merry Christmas, Jesus was gender fluid, end quote. I think that tweet really shows her contempt for Christianity and Christians. And again, I very much doubt that she will be calling Muhammad's gender into question at the end of Ramadan, or at any other time for that matter. And this isn't just an isolated case. Attacking and mocking Christianity and Christians is actually commonplace, whether it's in film, music, or on television. Christianity, Jesus, and the Christian God are regularly blasphemed. A notable example of this is the play Jerry Springer the Opera, where in Act 2, Jesus admits to being, and I quote, a little bit gay, end quote. Jesus is then portrayed as a nappy-wearing pervert who speaks to his own stigmata. His father, the Christian God, is portrayed as a bumbling inadequate. And eventually, Jerry Springer admonishes Jesus and tells him to, and I quote, grow up and put some clothes on, end quote. Again, I can only imagine what would happen if someone attempted to put on a play that depicted Muhammad as a homosexual who paraded around in a nappy. In fact, no one would even dare to portray Muhammad in any way, as under Islamic law, it is illegal to depict Muhammad. So you can't draw a picture of him, you can't have an actor portray him, you cannot depict him in any way. And in 2006, when the cartoon South Park attempted to air an episode which featured a cartoon depiction of Muhammad, Comedy Central, the network that broadcast South Park, refused to air that section of the show, blanking out the image of Muhammad with a black screen with white text over it that read, and I quote, Comedy Central has refused to broadcast an image of Muhammad on their network, end quote. But again, it doesn't end there. Certain rock bands have made a habit of tearing up the Bible as part of their show. Now, can you imagine a rock band tearing up a copy of the Quran or the Talmud? No venue would ever allow them through the door again. In fact, do you remember the Eagles of Death Metal? They were the band playing at the Bataclan Theatre in Paris when Muslim terrorists stormed the venue and murdered over 90 people. Yet after witnessing that terror attack, when their lead singer Jesse Hughes made remarks critical of Islam, the band was barred from playing at any festivals in France. So just to clarify, the lead singer of a band who saw his fans slaughtered by Muslim extremists is then barred from performing at festivals for criticising Islam. Yet other bands tear up the Bible on stage and are welcomed. And at this point, liberals usually start crying about freedom of speech, which is rather ironic. But let's be clear, the attacks on Christianity and Christians aren't about free speech, as the liberals, the media, and the politicians may claim. Because if these anti-Christian comments were free speech, then surely jokes or pictures of Muhammad would be covered by free speech as well, right? Wrong. 
You see, if you made the same comments about Islam and Muslims, or Jews and Judaism, as are regularly made about Christians and Christianity, not only would you receive widespread condemnation by politicians, the media, and a huge list of celebrities, in many countries, like here in the UK, you would be arrested for carrying out a hate crime, and would likely face jail time. So this disdain for Christianity has been building for a long time, and has already been present for a long time in films, TV shows, and in popular music. What's more, anti-Christian sentiment is often promoted by celebrities and so-called comedians. But now, this anti-Christian sentiment is in full effect in politics too, with many liberal politicians refusing to even mention Christians when Christians are being slaughtered on the holiest day of the Christian calendar. You see, the totem pole of oppression now includes religion as well, and the groups you can criticise are no longer simply white people, men, straight people, and traditionalists. You can add Christians to that list too. Because other religions, they are all protected, and the black disabled lesbian on top of the totem pole, she's now converted to Islam. These attacks on Christianity are nothing new, but they have been taken to a new level. And this is, of course, another attack on something that was once a force for morality, family values, and community cohesion in the Western world. And in the eyes of liberals, if you are white, straight, a traditionalist, and a Christian, you are absolutely fair game for any kind of abuse or discrimination. And don't forget, when you are abused or discriminated against, these liberals will call it positive action. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this podcast, please help spread the message by liking and sharing it on social networks. If you want to hear more from me, please hit the subscribe button as new videos are posted every week. You can also read my book, The Fall of Western Man. It's available as a free ebook and in both hardback and paperback, and all the links are in the description below. Finally, if you want to join in the discussion with me, feel free to add me on Facebook and follow me on Twitter. Also, you can now follow me on Gab, Minds, and BitChute as well. Everyone's welcome.